What happened Thursday? Crowd strike blackouts. Right. That was that was intentional. That Correct. was supposed to be the full shutdown. Right. But because Donald Trump did not die, they had to pull the plug on that. What you're saying is they pulled the plug on the total shutdown and it was too late for them to stop the entire thing because it was all planned ahead of time. It was already put in place. And they utilized that shutdown to erase evidence Whatever of who was responsible for this. The right. plan was erase the evidence of who did it. Right. Then we blame it on Iran. We go to war with Iran. Right. And then we say, MAGA guys, they killed your hero. Let's unite. let's unite as Americans and let's go get them. And their plan was that all of us, quote unquote, deplorables would say, yeah, yeah. Kill them. And then man. we would go over there and fight another mm-hmm. war with another generation of our strongest men and get them killed so that we could relieve ourselves again of the exact people who are most likely to rebel against this nonsense. What is up, guys? It's Andy Priscilla, and this is the show for the realists. Say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society, and welcome to motherfucking reality. Guys, today, we have Andy and DJ Cruise the motherfucking internet. That's what we're going to do. That's what CTI stands for. It stands for Cruise the internet. We're going to put topics of the day up on the screen. We're going to speculate on what's true and what's not true, and then we're going to talk about how we, the people, have to solve these problems going on in the world. Uh, other times, when you tune in throughout the week, we're going to have shows within the show. I usually break that down on Monday, but I'll break it down today, too. Um, sometimes we have Q&AF. That's where you submit questions and we give you the answers. Now, you could submit your questions a couple different ways. The first way is... Guys, email those questions in to askandy at andyfrasella.com. Or you go on YouTube in the Q&AF episode and drop your question in the comments. We'll pick some from there as well. Other times, we're going to have what's called real talk. That's just 5 to 20 minutes of me giving you some real talk. And then we have 75 hard verses. That's where someone who has completed the 75 hard program comes on, talks about how their life was before, how their life is now, and how they use the 75 hard program to mentally realign themselves and get their shit together. Okay, If you're unfamiliar with the 75 hard program, uh, it is the initial phase of the Live Hard program, which is the world's most famous mental transformation program in history. You can get it for free at episode 208 on the audio feed only. We weren't on YouTube then, but it's on the audio feed. 208. Get it for free. There's also a book. The book is called The Book on Mental Toughness. It has the entire Live Hard program plus an entire new 10 chapters on mental toughness, why it's important and why you need it and how to develop it, along with a bunch of case studies on some very famous people that have used mental toughness to become the very famous people that you recognize. You can get that book at andyforsella.com. Again, you can get the program for free on the audio feed, but the book is for people who want to know the ins and outs, and there's tons of extra value. Uh, We have a hard time keeping it in stock, if that tells you anything. So uh, we don't run ads on the show. That's something that you're going to notice. Um, in lieu of ads, I like to make a little deal with you and we call it paying the fee. What that means is if the show makes you think, if it makes you laugh, if it gives you a new perspective of something that needs to be heard, please share the show. If you, uh, believe in what we're saying and you're uncomfortable saying it, let us be your voice, share the show out there. The message has to get out. We got to fix what's going on. We're constantly dealing with censorship, traffic throttles, shadow bans, and all this stuff. Because we talk about the things we're not supposed to talk about. So uh, please help us get the show out there and pay the fee. Don't be a hoe. Share the show. All right. What's up, dude? What's going on, man? Oh, not much. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with you? No. Yep. Chilling. It's uh, another day, man. And uh, it's, it's hot as always. It is fucking hot. Yeah. Oh, you mean hot in the news cycle? No, no. Hot outside. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's swampy. Yeah. It's swamp ass. You got a fix for swamp ass? Yeah. Toilet paper. Paper towels. Man pond. The man pond from, okay. Yeah, man pond. I, I, I never tried. I don't know if that's real. Yeah, man pond from Robin Big. Mm. Big, big, this is, he takes a, a f- paper towel and folds it in a square and kind of just puts it in there between the cheeks. Man pond. What? Apparently it works. <laughs> don't lie. You Didn't don't. it fall out? Huh? Some, didn't it fall out that episode or some shit? I think so. <laughs> I think that's how he got it discovered. I think that's how it got discovered is it fell out. And Rob man. was like, what is this? Fuck. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I'm a cool man. You good, though, man? Everything yeah. good? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's good. It's funny. So I know, uh, you, you, I know who your favorite college football team is, right? Yeah. Uh, Texas Longhorns, yeah. right? But yeah. there was another option, mm-hmm. right? That you were interested in Notre Dame. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I still like Notre, I still like Notre Dame. Yeah, it's a great team. Yeah, great. If they're team. playing each other. I root for Texas, but other than that, I like both the teams. Yeah, Notre Dame's a great team, man. Um, and you know they're they're uh, now Oregon is known for the for the uniforms, but Notre Dame apparently is getting lit right now. Why destroyed? What for? Their new uniforms. Wait, they changed their uniforms? They got some new uniforms. Come on, man. Yeah, and they're getting fucking blasted online. You can't... Ch- that's one of the iconic uniforms of sports. You can't change it. And if you do change it... It's got to be good. It's got to be fucking great. No, bro, you're ruining tradition. This yeah. is stupid. So, I can't, no matter what it is, it's going to be bad. You think so? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so let, let's dive into this. I thought this was cool because, like I said, I know you like, you're like a fan of Notre Dame and... Uh, Let's let's check this out. So Notre Dame is getting cooked for its uniforms for the team's Shamrock season, uh, series game this season. The Fighting Irish will take the field November twenty third in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium for a showdown against Army. And prayers up to anyone's eyes that manages to see the game. Uh, Notre Dame Shamrock series uniform feature blinding gold numbers that are beyond ugly, bordering on offensive. Take a look below for yourself. So this is their post uh, that they put out um, saying it's in the details. And uh, the, these are some, the, the, this is the Shamrock Series uniform. Now, I'll be honest. That's not terrible. It's not that bad. It's for one game. It is for one game. Okay. And on top of it, that's not terrible. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. I mean, look, bro. Oregon goes out and plays in uniforms that look like shit every single game of the year. And nobody says it. Yeah, it's right. cool when they do it. Yeah. It's a problem. It's a problem when I, when I do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, th- I didn't think they were too bad. Like, people were talking about how, like, the numbers, like, you're not going to be able to see them or some shit. And, nah, uh, that ain't too bad. I it's thought one game. Fine. I think those are actually kind of cool. They don't look too bad. Yeah, I agree. They don't look too bad. Now, if they went that way... Full time, I would definitely have some things to say. Yeah, because I mean, you can't. I like their green uniforms. Mm-hmm. You ever seen their green shirts? Mm-hmm. Those are freaking I like the, sick. I like the ones they do, like their old school, where they pay the the homage back to like their original yeah. uniforms yeah. and shit. Like those are fire. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know, but like, nah, I, this is bullshit. I think it's fine. It's not that bad. But they get they're getting blasted. I mean, it's all over there. Okay, but I will say this too. You know, because here's the thing. Everybody that's blasting them, none of them actually have to wear the uniform, yeah. which I also think is important. The players, they always vote on this shit. Like, that's what they voted for. That's what they wanted. I think that, I actually think they're kind of good, dude. Yeah, they like, look they got, they, they got, like, a raised, uh, they're, like, raised. The numbers yeah. are embossed or whatever you want to call them. And they're playing Army. Like, it's a series game. Like, yeah. Uh, that's cool. I like it. I think the gold numbers are a little reflective or something, though. Yeah, whatever. It's better than a bunch of fucking rainbow shit. Yeah. <laughs> like most of these fucking teams do. Don't want none of that shit yeah. on them uniforms. Get that shit out of here. <laughs> that rainbow shit. Tell you another thing. Back in my day, there better not be none of that uh that that uh you know that stuff they put on them 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 jerseys. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. None of that dark stuff. None of that. That dark meat stuff. Yeah. White meat only. Uh, yeah, yeah. We got to keep it pure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think it's fine. It's fine. Guys, tell us what you guys think. I thought they were fine. Though. I know. That's that's way better than I thought they were going to be. I thought it was going to be way worse. Yeah, I'm like, everybody, everybody's upset mm. about, it's all right. It's okay. Nah, dude. Yeah. All right. Well, shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's what it is, man. That's what it is. But uh, but let's get into this cruise. Guys, remember, if you want to see any of these articles, pictures, links, videos, go to andyforsella.com. You guys can find them all linked there for you. Uh, with that being said, let's get right into it. Headline number one. Uh, Got to talk about it. Something big is happening in D.C. right now. It's been happening over the last 24 hours. Um, so let's, let's address it. Um, headline number one reads, anti-Israel rioters burn U.S. flag, attempt to breach Capitol Police line as Netanyahu addresses Congress. Um, so this was interesting. Uh, th- this was definitely interesting. Uh, and there's a lot of weird stuff happening with this. Um, a lot of interesting people talking about this and the things they're saying. It's interesting. Um, but yeah, so anti-Israel rioters burned the U.S. flag, flaunted blood, red, paint-soaked effigies, 
and even attempted to breach the U.S. Capitol Police line in Washington, D.C. on Wednesday. As Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed Congress, the hateful demonstration got so out of control that Capitol Police were forced to deploy pepper spray and other defensive measures to beat back the aggressive mob. The rioters also tore down American flags flying outside of nearby Union Station before hoisting Palestinian flags up the poles and burning the stars and stripes. Here's a video. So that's somebody that was trying to save the flag. Got a piece of it. Try to take the American flag that was burning. Yeah, what a piece of shit trying to take the American flag that was burning. Yeah, one hundred percent. But later that night, uh, Speaker, uh, a bunch of House Republicans, uh, they actually went back out to the flagpole that they uh, they they took the American flag back uh, down from, um, and they replaced it um, with a brand new American flag that night. Uh, here's a clip of that. So that is video of late last evening on what turned out to be one hell of a raucous day in Washington, D.C. A hoisting an American flag torn down by anti-Israel protesters earlier that day. The House Speaker Mike Johnson was there last night. He's with us today. And, sir, thank you for your time and thank you for coming back here to our program. Um, What did that moment mean to you? It was an important moment. I mean, I think it's appropriate for the elected representatives of the people. I was gathered there uh, with uh, patriots and veterans who served our country in the military. Representative Brandon Williams of uh, New York had the idea to go out there and put the American flag back in its rightful place. We cannot allow the pro-terrorist mobs to win. They're trying to intimidate uh, Jewish people and all those who support Israel, and we will not stand for it. So it was a proud moment for us. Yeah, but see, that's, that's where you lost me. Yeah, this um you're no, this is about America. This isn't about Jewish people. That flag does not represent Israel. <laughs> that flag represents everybody here in America. Dude, look, man. It's yeah. You got more? It's fucking stu- it's, it's stupid. I got I got a few things. Though. Um but yeah, so and then you got you got uh, VP Come Queen, she reacts to the to the violence happening in DC finally. Finally, we're starting to get some type of denouncing of this crazy shit. And again, I don't care which way it goes. Crazy shit's crazy shit. Um but she released a statement um on Twitter uh that she put out um saying yesterday at Union Station in Washington DC, we saw despicable acts of unpatriotic protesters and dangerous hate-fueled rhetoric. I condemn any individuals associating with the brutal terrorist organization Hamas, which has vowed to annihilate the state of Israel and kill Jews. Pro-Hamas graffiti and rhetoric is abhorrent, and we must not tolerate it in our nation. I condemn the burning of the American flag. That flag is a symbol of our highest ideals as a nation and represents the promise of America. It should never be desecrated in that way. I support the right to peacefully protest, but let's be clear. Anti-Semitism, hate, and violence of any kind have no place in our nation. Um, and, and the, the same line here, why is America the third paragraph? That should be the first fucking thing you should have said, right? There's no room in this country for that. Um, condemning the burning of the American flag that should have been the f- first part of your statement, right? Like it's just, it, it just goes along the same rhetoric. Now here's what's interesting. Well, what about that? What about when, uh, 2020 was coming around and BLM was writing and they, and she was on TV saying they're never going to stop. They're never going right? to stop. Do you have that? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was on, it's never going to stop. It's not going to stop post the election. Look, this is radical. She is a radical communist who is now playing the part of normalcy to attract the independent voter back to the Democrat side. So they have pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed on this far left bullshit that we're all sick of. Mm-hmm. And she was voted the most left senator in the United States, which, by the way, they went back and deleted off the Internet. Yep. So right now, what she's doing is she's trying to appear to be reasonable and quote unquote normal so that they can attract voters that have been disenfranchised from the Democrat Party that are now looking at Trump 
possibly back to them as an option. Yeah, 100%. And there's evidence of that because the thing is, well, I, I, with that too, it's like, <clears throat> but I believe that's exactly what her mission is. But mm -hmm. I don't believe they have enough of their other Democrat, you know, counterparts on the same page because then you got people like Hakeem Jeffries. Uh, he's saying that none of those protesters were left wing at all or they're not left wing. And maybe not no more, but they definitely were. What do you, what do you mean? He's saying that, that like the protesters that were burning the flags and stuff, they were not who were they then? Pro progressives. Who were they? <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's a good question, man. <laughs> because no, they were. There's they video. Were definitely your people. Listen, there's video of them being bust in. First of all, and they ran a cell phone device search, and hundreds, not a few, hundreds of those same people that were there yesterday were also at Kamala's speech in uh, Wisconsin, I believe it was, yep. the day before. So they took these people directly from Wisconsin, bust them to D.C. for Netanyahu to be here, and then turned them loose and told them to go do shit. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's ridiculous, man. And, bro, um, you know, how are you going to say that they're not the left wing when, you know, the right wing, and by the way, I don't agree with this either, um, but most of those guys are sucking Israel off right now, mm -hmm. okay? So, like, I don't agree with that either. No, no. And it's hard to say that they're not your people when you got people like Rashida Tlaib uh, during Netanyahu's speech, you know, pushing this narrative here. So it's like, you yeah. know, but, oh, but Jeffries didn't see that. Yeah. He, he Quote, I didn't see the activity of Rashida. Come on, man. Look, bro, these people are total liars. They have no problem lying. They have no problem gaslighting. They have no problem saying... I didn't say that when there's they know there's video evidence of them saying it. You had KGP yesterday on a, her presser saying that she did not think that, uh, you know, basically that there was no cover up for Joe Biden mm -hmm. this whole time. Right. When there clearly was these people went from Joe Biden is fine to Joe Biden's terrible to. Oh, look, we got Kamala in like a week, mm -hmm. right? They're, listen, these people don't care about you and me, and they don't care about our country. They care about maintaining control and power, and they don't give a fuck if they lie to you or cheat you. Just because you have a good heart and good beliefs and good ethics and uh, you know a moral standard that you live by or a code, they don't have that. You got to understand this. They don't have that. And when you assume that someone who is in a position to hurt you has the same moral code as you because you're a good person. That's a recipe for you to get killed. All right. So we have to recognize what's actually going on and who these people really are and what game is actually being played. And what's being played right now is that Joe Biden was a corpse. Everybody knew it. Um, and now they're trying to paint Kamala as some sort of savior when in reality, she's been a part of this destruction. She was the quote unquote and is the border czar. And now they're trying to say that never was the yeah. case. Like Bernstein Bears. Yes. Get the fuck out like, of bro, for the last four <laughs> years, do you not remember her going to Mexico early on and saying, do not come? Mm -hmm. Do not come. Oh, well, they came. Yeah, right. And they all fucking, and, and dude, and there, there's not a border crisis. That's misinformation. That's a lie. Look, dude. These people don't have the same morals or the same code of ethics that you and most people have, especially the Democrats, because I feel like Democrats, for the most part, vote on their heart and their emotion and what they believe to be right, sort of an idealistic viewpoint, the way things should be. And they ignore the way things are because they're voting on emotion. And I don't think these people that vote that way are bad people. I just think they don't understand that these other people who tell you all these things exist. Evil people exist, liars exist, manipulators exist, gaslighters exist, and their entire party has been hijacked by people who are those people and who do not represent what we would call traditional democratic values whatsoever. These are legit far left communists that, you know, they're trying to sell you on and, and you shouldn't be so, you know, so stupid to fall for it. Yeah. Yeah, so he had his uh, he, uh, so Netanyahu he, he did his address to Congress yesterday, and then today he uh, he he met with Biden, um, and uh, there was a really interesting ex exchange here um, that I would love to get your take on, Andy, um, because Netanyahu opens up with a very weird opening, 
Very weird opening. So he met he met with uh, Biden Thursday afternoon, um, and he opens up their meeting by saying, "Quote from a proud Jewish Zionist to a proud Irish American Zionist, I want to thank you for fifty years of public service and fifty years of support for the state of Israel. Fifty years of support to an American Irish what." Huh? Yeah. That's a very interesting thing to start a meeting off with. Why? Calling calling the sitting president of America a Zionist. Well, he says he's a Zionist. He says it openly. He's been asked that. He says that. Hmm. What Google Zionist? What's it say? Zionism is an ethnocultural nationalist movement that emerged in Europe in the late 19th century and aimed for the establishment of a Jewish state through the colonization of land outside of Europe. So a Zionist would be somebody that is in support of that. Okay. So you're, so, so, you know, it's come to, it's, it, that's, that is the technical definition. Are you in support of the state of Israel? Mm -hmm. Yes or no. But that has evolved into a definition now where do you support the state of Israel above all other states? Right. Supremacy. And that's, yeah, yes. Yeah. And that's where the problem is. Okay. And we shouldn't have anybody in our government that supports any other government more than they support the one that we have. In fact, we should have nobody in our government that it contains dual citizenship of any other country in the world. That's not what this is about. This is our country. This is the United States of America. We have the right to, to have people represent us that are from us that are our people without having to worry does their loyalty lie with another country or does their loyalty lie with us and this is why i say there should be no dual citizens in our government when in fact there are a shit ton of them and guess what country they're from yeah yeah it's 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 interesting um it's thought provoking it's lovely uh the other part of this too man it's like you know Kamala, you know, I'm, I'm starting to become more and more aware of like she is playing a very key and very central part in this whole communistic push that I definitely missed for the last couple. Of, like I have not I just haven't been that aware because they've been keeping her in a closet for the last four years. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but uh, uh, this guy by the name of Chad Prather um, watch Chad. Uh, he, put, he made this compilation, this video compilation, man. And, and it's. It's definitely eye opening, man. Let's let's check this out. It has to be about a goal of saying everybody should end up in the same place. And since we didn't start in the same place, some folks might need more equitable distribution, giving resources based on equity, understanding that we we fight for equality, but we also need to fight for equity, understanding not everyone starts out at the same place. So there's a big difference between equality and equity. Equality suggest often everybody should get the same thing. Well, that often assumes everybody started out in the same place, as opposed to equity, which is everyone should end up in the same place. And if you then understand not everybody started out in the same place, you understand some people need more. So we all end up in the same place, right? No. We are proud of the fact that equity is one of our guiding principles. Proud of the fact that we understand equality is important, but not everybody starts out on the same base. We see that people in our country are having an experience that is not equal. So when we talk about the work we are doing here together, it is recognizing that and being guided by this principle of what we must do in the spirit and in the interest of equity to put equity firmly at the center. That's, that's communist shit. A hundred percent. Bro, why do you think they want all these people to come over here? They are trying to throw the balance of the population between the doers and the not doers, between the creators and the consumers, between the workers and the people who do not work. They want as many people in this country unemployed. They want as many people in this country 
not seeking work. They want as many people in this country pissed off about the differences between those who produce and those don't, because if they have more of those people, then they get to maintain power on that message. You see what I'm saying? That's what this is about. She is saying these things in terms of what it's going to do for her. They are pandering to a the, the larger population base, which is what they've intended to create so that they can maintain control and power. And <clears throat> there's a whole book about this called Atlas Shrugged. I've mentioned it a number of times that you all should read because this never works out because what ends up happening is the people who are the producers, it becomes so burdensome for them to produce and so unprofitable for them to produce that they don't produce. They start just producing for themselves and then everybody else starves, okay? That's where we end up in th- what she's talking yeah, about. That's it, what she means when she says the same place. We, yeah, we, we'll end up in the same place. Yeah, it'll all be mass poverty and then they control us. That's the point. That's happened over and over and over and over again in history. And this woman... Her father was a Marxist professor. What she's talking about are Marxist policies and ideas that have never worked and have resulted in the deaths of hundreds of millions of people. That philosophy that she's talking about in those clips has killed more people than any war, than any pandemic, than anything else combined, okay? Because it does not work and it throws the balance of power so far onto the ruling class that the rest of the people are helpless. And dude, what is the saying about uh, about power corrupting? Yeah, absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's right. And that's what happens. And she's in that game right now. And so what they're trying to do is mask this fact that she actually believes that. Now remember, she grew up with that ideology. She believes that shit. 100%. They're trying to mask that right now and make her seem like she's the reasonable normal choice that's why she's on there saying you shouldn't burn american flags where was she saying that in 2020 right how many times did she say in 2020 not to burn american flags not a single time okay how many times has she condemned any of the unrest that's happened over the last four years before yesterday none zero it's never happened So why all of a sudden now? Well, the reason all of a sudden now is because everybody's so tired of this ridiculous shit that a lot of their quote unquote base, which I would consider good hearted people who have identified themselves as Democrats over the last 30, 40 years. Right. And, you know, if you're a young person, you grew up in one of these houses, you think you're a Democrat. Those people who say, I'm a Democrat, but then think of being a Democrat like 30, 40 years ago, like their parents, those people have all left the party. They understand what's going on is wrong, and they have switched, and they have said, you know what, this is going to kill our entire country. It's, it's killing me. It's killing my household. We're not able to make living the way that we need to, and I'm going to vote for Trump. And so what they're trying to do right now is they're trying to frame her as the reasonable option hoping that Donald Trump's attempted assassination will spark radicalism on that side so that they will look crazy and these people will look normal. That's the game they're trying to play. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah it's, it's so crazy. And I, I've been seeing more stuff about, you know, her, her background and like, you know, that she's an Indian Jamaican, you know, hybrid humane society thing or something happening there. Uh, but it's funny because this, this clip comes out. Check, check this out. Kamala Harris, you are not getting any vote from the Indian community. Specifically because you do not talk like this. You are half Indian and I've never seen you eat chicken tikka masala. (laughs) Kamala Harris, have you even seen Om Shanti Om? Do you even know how to say hello in Hindi? It is Kiawa, by the way. But don't use that in your speech. I have not seen you wear a sari once in your life. Donald Trump will get the Indian vote, however. Do you know who runs all of Trump's IT software? That is correct. Indians. We run all the tech support on Truth Social. Kamala, I don't ever want you using your half Indianness ever again. We revoke your Indian access. You are not allowed to Uber <laughs> eat from any Indian restaurant ever again. Indians. Shame, Kamala Harris. Shame. 
Well, yep. the looks Indian, like the yeah, Indian delegation has spoke. That's right. <laughs> the Indians have spoken. Dude, it's crazy. Now, I mean, like, and listen, like, on a serious note, though, I mean, we, we still have to understand that there is still an image of America that is being projected right now, and it is, it is weaker than it was two weeks ago. Much weaker. Yeah. And people will take advantage of that. Did you yep. see uh, the stuff that's happening right now off the coast of Alaska? Yeah, man. Right? We two, got... two Russian bombers and two Chinese bombers flew into uh, Alaska air defense area. Yeah. Like, and, and, yeah. and <clears throat> again, like, I mean, when you have a country that's in the state that we are in politically, right? Like, like our political uh, stature in the world is weak as fuck right now. Well, do you know why that happened? Do you know the backstory here? So we we flew a B fifty two a couple B fifty twos into the airspace last week that didn't get reported on the news, mm. and they landed in Romania. I, okay, yeah, 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 I saw that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so then they, their, response their response was to send yeah. you know the four bombers into Alaskan airspace, which then we sent two F sixteens and F thirty five, and then uh, couple from Canada. two two Canada F eighteens, mm-hmm. and basically told them get the fuck out, and they did. Yeah, quickly. Yeah, it's funny, but but they they act <laughs> Russian uh, media laughed at us for that, um, and then they actually posted the video of them doing it. Did you see? Have you seen the clip? Yeah, I saw the clip, but I mean, <laughs> they turned around right away and went home. I don't yeah. know what they're bragging about. Uh, oh, I mean. I mean, they're flying a hundred yards away from them. Say that again. They're flying a hundred. Y- By the way, look how shitty their bombers are compared to they ours. They look really old. Yeah, it's a B fifty. Like you, I fuck mean. you, motherfuckers want some? Come get it. <laughs> okay, you might think we're weak right now because all they show on TV is a bunch of rainbow weirdos. I'm gonna tell you right now, we'll fuck you up. Period. Yeah, we will true. fuck you up. To the worst extent possible. So bring whatever the fuck you think you need to bring, and we'll see what happens with your old ass shit. I'm just saying. Yeah. See, bro, I need to be president. That's yeah. exactly what I'd get that's on TV you, and say to him. Say. I yeah. I say it. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, you motherfuckers <laughs> fly those pieces of shit over here again. I'll make it a point to make you understand why you shouldn't have such pieces of shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Idiots. Yeah, dude, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, guys. Well, we're real close to to a conflict, dude. I mean, it's it's no it's no joke. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, those of you who have children, um, and I'm going to say this too because this is a point of contention that I've noticed o- over the last few days. Uh, first of all, they're inflating the polls for her. Uh, did you did you see the ridiculous? Did you see how they how they're uh, fudging the donations, bro? They're ba- oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, these well, and it's nothing new. That, that donation like, number that they that they did, they're laundering money through 100%. through Act Blue is 100%. what's happening. Um but anyhow, you know, those of you with children, I'm just going to say this because I see a lot of women saying, you know, I'm going to vote for Kamala because we need a woman president. And to you I would say this. If you're married and your husband has a job, and his job is to go out and make money and take care of your kids. You better understand that by voting for her, you're making his job almost impossible. Okay. You you can there's a lot of people on the right wing that are unpalatable. They're unpalatable to me. I can't fucking stand them. Like these people who like we could joke and we could say shit, right? Like uh, you know, and, and tell jokes, but like there's people over there on the far right that are just as nasty as the far left. Mm-hmm. And women need to understand real real talk here like i'm talking to the brunch girls that don't really know they're not really informed and they want to just vote for a woman because it's a woman and it's exciting you are killing your your own family and your own sense and your own ability to prog- to have progress because of how hard it will affect the economy and in four more years you 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 think biden was bad it'll be a hundred times worse so I would just I just want I just want people to understand that. Like if you vote because of someone's skin color or because of someone's gender, you are falling into their trap to put in someone who's going to greatly harm this country, 
greatly harm your household. You think your household is more difficult now? Wait until they've got her in there and it gets a hundred times worse. And so, dude, like, you know, those women, like, because I've heard this, dude, like, my wife's voting for Kamala. I'm voting for Trump. Bro, your wife's intentionally destroying your family. And a lot of women need to really understand this. They need to really understand because, dude, the truth is there's still a lot of households that are in the middle class where these women that we make fun of a lot that go to brunch and with their pinkies up and shit, these women don't necessarily are not the breadwinners of their household, okay? And you're putting your husband or your significant other in a very difficult spot where they're not going to be able to fucking make as much money or survive the way that they could under a, a you know, a, a traditional healthy capitalist, economy. healthy economy yeah. that Trump has proven that he understands. And dude, it's very, very dangerous. And I think women especially need to really, really, really think about it. And on top of that, you know, do you really want this to be the woman that becomes president and represents all of you guys, because I'm going to tell you, dude, I know a hundred women off the top of my head that are better than her. Okay. And if she goes in there and totally destroys it, dude, there'll never be another woman president again. No. It'll never happen. No. It'll set, it'll set the whole women's rights movement back fucking 200 years. Because what'll happen is at the end of this four years, when the country's totally fucked, every single dude in the world is going to be saying women shouldn't even be able to vote. Mm -hmm. Women shouldn't even be able to fucking do this. Like it's going to set that backwards by putting this woman into office. That's and, so real. Yeah, dude. And people people don't want to talk about that because it's a mean conversation to have, quote unquote mean. But like, bro, that's what's going to end up happening. You're going to get somebody who's so radical in power, they're going to say, dude, women can't vote. Look what the fuck I did. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, man. And it's very dangerous, dude. Yeah, not to like, mention for those brunchers, I vote for her. That means less brunches for you. So well, just keep that in mind. Too. Yeah, times are going to get hard. <laughs> they're going to be real hard. Listen, they're going to get way harder. And, you know, I think, I don't think that she's taken the way that they're portraying her to be to, to be accepted right now. Because, like, as much as they're hyping her up on media, like, I saw her little campaign the other day. Dude, there was, like, 400 people there. There was nobody there. And then on top of it, it wasn't even 400. It was probably 200. And then on top of it, they're, they're, um... You know, they're trying to paint this picture that's just not accurate, bro. Like, what if they, you, do you want four more years of what you just had in accelerated pace? Yes or no? Right. Because if you do, vote for her. If you want shit to get better, you got to vote the other way. No, gar regardless of what you think of the man running. And this is like an emotional thing, right? Like, most people will totally fuck their lives up by making emotional decisions, right? Like, if you make an emotional decision about almost anything, it ends up bad. People say, well, what about falling in love? Well, that's that's an emotional decision. And that person might not be the best partner for you, which is why m the majority of people that get married end up in divorces. You know, when people quit their jobs because they're pissed off, usually they regret it, right? Because it was a highly emotional decision. And they're going to pull this play that I talked about a few shows ago where they're going to put her in. She's The, the polls aren't going to move the way they want them to move. And then they're going to sub in, uh, they're going to sub in, uh, Michelle, big, big, Mike. that's what I think. Yeah. And, and I think, I think we're, you know, they talked about, oh, well, she already has all the delegates. They're going to try to force her in. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like oh, they're, the, they're expediting it. I know actually. they're trying to do a virtual confirmation yeah. so that like the, the actual DNC doesn't even matter at all. Nope. And how does that represent the voters will? Well, they're trying to say it's because, you know, there, there's an August 7th deadline for the state of Ohio, right? That's the first deadline that they have to get the official nominee on the ballot. And so they're rushing this in saying that, oh, well, you know, but y'all set the date for August 19th. Why didn't y'all set it for, you know what I'm saying, to actually respect the process, how it's supposed to be. So they're trying to rush this shit uh, because they have until August 7th. If they don't get the official nominee on the ballot for the state of Ohio by August 7th, there will be no Democratic nominee on the ballot. Let's not forget this. They were counting on Trump's head exploding on national completely, TV. Completely. Which means they would have two candidates, neither of which anyone voted for. Right. To become president of the United States. And you guys don't think this is communism? But we're the threats to democracy. That's right. No, we're not. They're the fucking threats. These tyrants are the threats. These people who go on TV every day and gaslight you and lie to you and tell you that everything is good when you know everything's not good. 
These are the enemy. It's not me. It's not you. It's not the black guy or the white guy or the the woman or the, the gay person or the straight person. It's these fucking tyrants, bro. And if we don't figure that out real quick, and if we don't figure out why they hate Trump so bad real quick, we're in deep shit. And we won't survive another four years as a fucking country. We'll be invaded or it will completely collapse and your life will become dog shit. You want to talk about, it'll be, it'll be Great Depression all over again. Exactly 100 years later. It's crazy. Man. Yeah. Yeah, guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think. With that being said, let's go check some of those comments out. We got crews in the comments, Andy. Um, this first one comes from uh, at Butt of Bites. Butt of Bites. Butt of Bites. Okay. Uh, she says, can we have ring girls like they have at fights for the waterboarding? I'd like to be the girl for round motherfucking one. P.S. My son uses my YouTube account, so please go easy on my name. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> Butt of bites. <laughs> Sharing a mother son YouTube. So yeah, wholesome. Yeah. So wholesome. Sure. Yeah. Yes, we can have ring girls, and yes, you can be one of them. Mm. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, Let's you do guys it. just gotta organize me to get in there. I handle all of this. <laughs> These are just logistics. Yeah. These are. These are these are easy. The, the small details matter. They do. We'll make it right though. Yeah, for sure. We'll make it white. Uh, this what? next, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> this next comment comes from at JP the third. Let me ask you something. Potential locations: Foundry, First Form Headquarters, Forest Park, the Armory, West County Mall, any place that serves Chinese fried rice, <laughs> or anywhere EBT is accepted. <laughs> fried rice. Those are some good, good locations, man. Good suggestions. I'm down with that. I like that guy. <laughs> I like that guy. Yeah, I'm down with it. Uh, we got one final one here for you. JP the third. You're the man. Yeah, I, I'm down with it. <clears throat> uh, and there's a few good spots. I want to go to. We gotta go to the hood, huh? We gotta go to like the hood, hood. The hood. That's what he's yeah. saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I know the spots. Yeah, there's a place right off. Bro, the remember road. that? Remember that time me and you went down there and nobody would talk to me. Nobody waved at you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Everybody looked at me like I was a cop, bro. Yeah, Who's that nigga on that nag? What yeah. is that? Yeah. I ride down there in a big ass dually. <laughs> Longhorn. Who's this fucking? Who's this fucking cowboy? <laughs> Oh man! Uh, one last little, uh, little comment here. This one is from at brvdmx. He says, uh, "The prevalence of these back-to-back CTIs get my nipples hard." Let's fucking go! Hell yeah! Cutting diamonds over there, Andy. It's a little gay. <laughs> let's, let's fucking gay. Let let yep. you know what, man. I'll take it. Yeah. Hey, I'll take it. We're gonna unify diversity. That's right. We're gonna unify here. We want all the gays. Gays are welcome. Mm-hmm. Why are you? Why are you gay, <laughs> guys? We appreciate you, real ass fans, man. Thank you guys for liking and commenting. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Hit that bell notification on the tube to stay up to date with the latest episodes, uh, so you don't miss those. With that being said, let's keep this cruise moving. We got headline number two. Uh, headline number two reads. FBI director questions whether Trump was struck by bullet as ex president's team decries conspiracy bullshit. Did you see this fucking guy? Oh, bro. What happened? Oh, bro. The FBI director, the head Ray? of the FBI, made the stunning assertion Wednesday that former President Donald Trump may not have been struck by an actual bullet when a deranged gunman attempted to assassinate him at a political rally. And was instead injured by shrapnel. Shrapnel from hitting what? Bro, I had people who believed that he had a ketchup packet in his fucking hand. Bro. Okay? And Bro. these are these are people that I that are like You're, on the yeah. on the right. Like ugh. You got listen, you gotta be a certain level of stupid. I think there's so much conspiracy and so much misinformation. I mean, I think people, I think it's very, very difficult for people to take things at surface value because we've been so conditioned to look under the surface that it's hard for us to recognize what is actually real and what is conspiracy nonsense bullshit. And the conspiracy about the Trump shooting is not whether or not he he was shot. It was who did it. Right. And 
It certainly wasn't some 19-year-old or 20-year-old soy boy pussy who was acting alone who got within 130 yards of Donald Trump. That's not happening. That doesn't happen. Okay? And that's why there was so much, um, you know, gatekeeping and and blocking from the the lady who was in charge of the Secret Service and why there hasn't been any information come out. Mm -hmm. I believe that this will all come out and we will find out that it was members of our own government. It was exactly who we think would want Donald Trump assassinated, who was behind it. And I think those people are panicking. I think this is the o- I think this is the first move that has happened in a long, long time that didn't go the way they thought it was going to go. Mm-hmm. Because we we what do we see right after immense panic. Oh, immense panic. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. And like people got like my my take on this man uh, is that y- you have to understand what. Like, look at the timeline of events, right? And so what I believe is is that they were completely sold that Donald Trump on July 13th would, would, be, be, dead. No, would be no more. I agree. Right? And the head, we're talking about the head of this MAGA party, whatever they want to call it, the leader of whatever they want to call this, would no longer be existing, right? A week before that, you got them putting and setting off these, these stock trades, $15 million. Right. Where they would have stood to make anywhere from 700 to almost a billion, 700. It wasn't million. even a week before that. It was days before it. days before. Right. Yeah. But like that's when they, they, they started trickling them in there and yeah. then they flooded it two days before. Right. Yeah. Where they would have stood to make anywhere from 700 million to a billion dollars just off the death alone. Yeah. OK. So you look at that. You have you have that. You Which have is that. double the size of the fund. That actually shorted the stock. Correct. The fund is only a billion dollars. Correct. Which is a small fund. Very small. Okay. So they would have doubled their their fund size off of this short had Donald Trump been killed. Had he died. Yeah. Just just off of that. And BlackRock and Vanguard are the Majority. two funds mm-hmm. that own that fucking fund. Majority owners. Okay. And then there was a there was a clip going around that said Larry Fink may be Trump's treasury secretary and he came out and said that's complete bullshit complete bullshit man. so all of you guys saying oh he's in with all those guys no the fuck he isn't no you know but so so you look at that you look at this the, the stock and, and this is just me like just looking at the timeline of, of things right <clears throat> assassination ha- attempt assassination happens on that saturday right by sunday they probably would have announced his official death right and then come monday everybody's like, okay well what the fuck like you know Come by Wednesday, it would have been complete chaos. What happened Thursday? Crowd strike blackouts. Right. That was that was intentional. I right? agree. Like that was abs- Like that was supposed that was to planned be, ahead. That Correct. was supposed to be the full shutdown. Right. But because Donald Trump did not die, they had to pull the plug on that, which they did. I believe it was like that Saturday evening, a week later, um, going into Monday. Uh, you're Sunday saying. Morning. You're saying. That Had it would have died, been, you're saying been it would have been way worse. That would have been permanent. Yes. It would have been weeks or months what with no af- with no fucking internet. What did it affect? Flights, nobody could move, Banks. so you're stuck in these cut can't get their money cities. out. Can't get your money out. Yeah. Was- so instead they they what you're saying is they pulled the plug on the total shutdown and it was too late for them to stop the entire thing because it was all planned ahead of time. It was already put in place. And they utilized that shutdown to erase evidence Whatever of who was responsible for this all right turn which it was back on. Turn it that back was on. the plan all along the right. plan was erase the evidence of who did it right then we blame it on iran we go to war with iran right. and then we say maga guys they killed your hero let's unite. let's unite as americans and let's go get them and their plan was that all of us quote unquote deplorables would say yeah Kill them. And then we would go over there and fight another fucking war Mm -hmm. with another generation of our strongest men and get them fucking killed so that we could relieve ourselves again of the exact people who are most likely to rebel against this nonsense. Right. You know, and the thing is, it's like, you know, but that did Trump, Trump survived. Right. Which means that there was no mass chaos. And all of these, you got to understand this because this is the important part. All of these questions, all of, all of these questions that we're asking right now, all this information we're seeking for, had Trump died, we would have not had the opportunity to ask because we would have been in chaos, right? But because that didn't happen, we have the opportunity to ask. There's, there's questions that we need answers to. Um, and there is stuff that just does not make sense, right? Like, you know, the three explosive devices, they have its entire search history, its entire search history. 
And they were able to conclude that with about seven days before, so one week before the rally is when he concocted this plan to do this. And so you're telling me, and, and there's no evidence of any search history about how to make explosives, how to make these pipe bombs, how to do any of this stuff. And so one week before, all of a sudden, he, he grabs this knowledge to make three explosive devices with remote detonation by himself. It makes absolutely no sense. These are all the points. I just want to lay this out. This is all the points that they want us to believe. Uh, this is their narrative that they want us to believe. That he flew a drone or, or, or that they want us to believe that he did all of these things without any type of help. Right. Okay. Here, let's read through them. I'll read them. Yeah. Flew a drone over the Pennsylvania fairgrounds and got aerial footage of the rally layout on the day of the event, including two hours before Trump took the stage. Point two. Got a range finder through security. Point three, evaded law enforcement officers from several different state, local, and federal agencies. Point four, somehow climbed up on the roof with his rifle 450 feet away from Trump. Bear crawled to the perfect vantage point as bystanders alerted police and was still able to take eight shots at Trump. Next point, parked a vehicle full of explosives near the Trump rally, even though there is no online search history of crooks researching how to make at-home explosives. Next point, crooks was able to walk around the premises after snipers took a photo of him looking suspicious. Next point, a sniper located in the second story window, which was only 40 feet away from crooks and didn't neutralize him. Next point. Trump was still able to take the stage after Crooks was pegged as suspicious by Secret Service. And he did all of that by himself. It's all by himself. Even okay. though he was on a bike, he was also on a bike during that. Um, you know, and, and then you add in this this other part that's coming to fruition, which I've been like waiting on to put in because I wanted to make sure that it was it was legit. There this there there is someone's phone, somebody's cell phone, someone's mobile data has been tracked to regularly visit Thomas Crook's home and also visit another building, which is directly down the street. From it's the next door. So it's the next building over. Okay, it's not down the street. It's not close to. It is the next building over from an FBI office. So you're going to tell me this dude did all of that alone and then, on top of it, there was a person who visited his home several times to the days leading up to the assassination who also frequented the building right next door to the FBI office. Seems perfectly normal. He must have done it on his own. Yeah, completely normal, man. Whose and, phone is it? And, by the way... It, it's, uh, you know, it's normal how they reacted, right? It's normal how, you know, we're not, we haven't had a single press conference about it, like with details. We haven't had Trump come out and say much, which is interesting. Why hasn't Trump come out and like detailed this? You know, he's kind of chilling under the covers. And my take on that is that Trump knows exactly what's going on and it's being handled in the background. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. um, which dude, if you want to put on the tinfoil hat, you go to the song that he played after the uh, convention at the RNC when they were leaving the convention. He played an opera song. Did we cover that on the show? He played an opera song that is actually uh, was used in the movie um, from back like in the 90s with Ben Affleck and Morgan Freeman. Uh, what's the movie called? It's uh, Some of All Fears. Some of all fears. And it's a great movie. And in the end of the movie, okay, it's some of all fears. It's a, the movie is about an assassination attempt on the president. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the movie, the all the people who conspired to kill the president are all being retaliated and getting killed. Like car bombs, assassinations, all these things, right? And they're playing that song. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Trump just happens to play a song at the end of his uh, RNC that's, that is the same song that's played in a movie about assassinating a president when the bad guys are getting their justice behind the scenes. Hmm. That that seems like he might know what's going on. You see what I'm that, saying? That's deep. that's deep. I think he knows exactly what's going on. 
And I think there's a lot going on in the background here that we're not hearing about or knowing about that will potentially come to light soon. Um, yeah, that's what I think, dude. Yeah. But I'm only counter to that, though, man. And, like, I'm cool, I'm cool with that. I want to know. I think I want to know too. Don't don't just kill these fucks off in the background. Listen, I want to know. Listen, Who we deserve to live in a open, free society where we know the truth about everything. We should not be held as a lower level citizen that is too dumb to understand, that is fed the excuse over and over and over again of classified information. This is our fucking country. We pay the taxes here. This is this country exists for us, not them. They exist to serve us. So what right do they have to keep any information from us about anything? We need someone that goes up there and says, all right, this is going to be tough for all you to swallow. But here's what's been going on. Here's the truth. All right. This, 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 this and this. And until that happens, we're going to have to sit out here and try to play games trying to figure out what's going on, which is what they want. They do not want us to be able to pinpoint what the truth is because by not knowing the truth, it creates division, which helps them. We get to argue over what's true. You better wear the mask because if you don't wear a mask, you're a grandma killer. Bro, the mask doesn't work. Fuck you. No, fuck you. That's what they want. It was a ketchup packet. It yeah, right, was, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well. And, and they want us doing that on everything. They want us doing that about, you know, COVID. They want us doing that about uh, the election, politics, race, gender, all this shit. They, they, they do not want peace and understanding and clarity because it does not serve them. Okay? We deserve that because we are the ones that have built this country off of the backs of our fucking tax dollars and our family sacrifices. All right? How do we not deserve to know what's going on? Bro, people in our families have died for this country and they're not going to tell us the truth. That's bullshit. All right. And we need some real leaders to go up there and fight for this. Like I said the other day, I'm tired of these people coming in and saying, oh, we, we really let them have it. We ask them a lot of questions. No. What comes of that? Right. This is getting old. You know, all these people going up there and saying, oh, we fucking grilled them. No one cares. We want to see accountability. We want to see some action. We want to know some shit. Real. Yeah, bro. And we need full declassification of all information. If we are ever going to trust our government again, it is a required. It's required. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll never be trust ever again. I won't trust them ever again. No. No. Guys, jump in on this conversation. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think. With that being said, let's get to our third and final headline. Headline number three. Headline number three reads, Mr. Beast breaks silence on former co-host Ava Chris Tyson's grooming allegations. I am disgusted. Yeah, Mr. Beast. All right, so let's let's check in on this because this is now. Granted, this is new. This is developing. There's a lot of interesting things happening here. Let's try to collect some uh, some connect some dots here. Um, so YouTube star Mr. Beast. Everybody knows him. Uh, he's probably the most famous influencer on YouTube. That's where he started on the planet. On the planet. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking chocolate bars. No question. I mean, he's crushed it. He's killed it. Yeah. Totally redid the entire game in terms of content creation. One hundred percent. Icon. Yeah. At um, 25 years old. He's super young. Yeah. Super young. Um, but he has broken his silence on the allegations of grooming a minor, uh, minor against his former co-host, Ava Chris Tyson. Uh, Tyson, who's 28, this week announced that she's quitting the popular channel after she- Hold was, on, bro. She's not a she. Yes. I, I Listen, that's not my language. Okay. I know. But it's a he. <laughs> I ain't gay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not playing that. That's a dude. That's a dude. <laughs> Chris Tyson this week announced that he's quitting the popular channel. We're not playing that game. I'm ready. I'm not playing the game ever. I'm down. Ever. I'm down with it. Um, but yeah, so he, so he announced that uh, and, uh, and it was- Hold on. I want to say something about that. Yeah. You cannot play their language game. You cannot play their language game. Communism is all about language control. You cannot play the game. They will shame you and say you're being unkind and unfair. It's the truth. The truth has to be said the way the truth is. 
I'm not trying to offend this person. I'm not trying to make them feel bad. I'm speaking the truth because if they make me audit what I know is the truth, then I am compromising my integrity, my confidence, my belief in myself, which lowers my ability to think for myself. Okay. This whole, we're going to use the language. That shit is not happening here. It's not happening with me. Don't ever fucking expect me to do it because I'm not doing it. I will never compromise what I know to be true for someone else's fucking feelings. It's not going to happen. It's real shit, man. Um, but yeah, so it came out after he was accused of sending inappropriate messages uh, to a then 13-year-old uh, when he was 20. Okay. Um, so this this uh, boy is now 21 now. Mm-hmm. Um so in turn, Mr. Beast, whose real name is Jimmy Donaldson, uh, said that he would no longer be working with Tyson and revealed that he has uh, hired a third party to conduct a thorough investigation into the allegation. So this was his full statement. Uh, he says, quote, over the last few days, I've become aware of the serious allegations of Ava Tyson's behavior online, and I am disgusted and opposed to such unacceptable acts. During that time, I have been focused on hiring an independent third party to conduct a thorough investigation to ensure I have all the facts. That said, I've seen enough online and taken immediate action to remove Ava from the company, my channel, and any association with Mr. Beast. I do not condone or support any of the inappropriate actions. I will allow the independent investigators the necessary time to conduct a comprehensive investigation and will take any further actions based on their findings. Um, And with that, he released another video. Uh... Oh, fuck. (laughs) That's fucked up. (laughs) That's fucked up. Come on, man. All right. Sorry. Come on. Uh, But here's a weird thing, man. So so here's the thing. So the the, the 13-year-old or then 13-year-old that they – you know, that was uh, the inappropriate messages were alleged. Um, It goes by the name of Lava. Um, They released a statement. He released a statement um, saying that, quote, these videos are massive lies and twisting the truth. Ava never did anything wrong and just made a few edgy jokes. I was never exploited or taken advantage of. Can you do me a favor and comment on these videos and tell them to stop spreading lies? This situation takes away from children who are actively being exploited every day online. I am not a victim of anything being claimed in these videos or at all. Um, To which uh, on Twitter, he's been uh, these are some of the responses. Um, One saying you've been groomed, man, you're a victim. You don't have to protect these people. Another person replied saying that's called grooming. You're not supposed to feel like it was wrong. Um, another person put put this out there saying, show us on this teddy bear where Chris Tyson touched you, um, you know, and like, listen, like, do I believe that that Chris Tyson actually did some weird stuff? I don't know. Well, the I don't know if you had this in the story, but there was a number of other people who that allegedly also came out, out and yeah. said that he had done that shit with them. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, so while the main person in question here is saying no, it was just edgy there's jokes. other people that came out. But, and we have to say this, dude, when you're famous and you're rich, people lie. No. Okay, so we, we, I right. think, I think Mr. Beast Jimmy is doing the right thing by hiring an independent uh, investigation. Party, yeah. I just think he needs to stay out of it and let it be what it's going to be. Uh, because this is a dicey situation for him and the brand that he's built, which is incredible. Yeah. But it mainly, you know, children are his biggest fan base. It's a massive fan yeah. base, man. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, you can't have any of this shit a thousand miles a- around you if children is going to be a big part of your audience. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, how I see this, it, you know, I, I don't really know much about Mr. Beast. I've got some friends that are friends with him and shit, and they all like him. And, you know, they say he's brilliant. Um, but he's also very young and he lacks experience of being that famous. I mean, who the fuck could prepare you for that? I know I'm not even one tenth as famous as this motherfucker is now. And I know how people behave Mm -hmm. about, you know, they start seeing things and they, they, whether it's true or not, they see ways to take you down, uh, they're jealous or they want some money and, you know, people lie, dude. I get people that lie about me every motherfucking day, every day they Mm -hmm. fucking lie. And you know, what I've learned to do is just stay away from those situations ever. I mean, this is really why I stay home most of the time. And, um, you know, I 
There was videos coming out that said Mr. that Mr. Beast knew about all this shit. Yeah, you got this? Yeah, there's videos talking about that he knew about it. There's, you know, now and like and here's the thing, man. When there's blood in the water, shock shit's the gonna come out. Right? Yeah. And 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 like, you know, some of the stuff you can write off, some of it yeah, it's it's questionable. You know what I'm saying? And like, and I will also say this too. We are in a day and age where, you know, we 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 just so easily questioned that uh, you know, that phone call that Biden had with the campaign office. Yeah, you can't you don't know if it's true or if it's AI you know, or what. But like we get an audio clip that comes yeah. out of the woodwork, you know, years later and yeah. that's guaranteed fucking real. Yeah. Right. And so it's well, like Well, I've seen AI audio clips of me and I have a very distinct voice. Yeah. Yeah. And and it was I, I had to ask one of our guys, I'm like, Hey, where the fuck is this clip? Yeah. And they're like, no, that's AI. I'm like, I don't remember saying that. They're like, you didn't say that. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. You know, so like we, we the my point is, is that like we have to be very, very careful with what we jump on to believe one way or the other. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, so like there's a video, uh, you know, one of the, the things that have come out is that apparently a video resurfaces of Mr. Beast making sexual comments about then 14 year old bad Barbie. The girl who was like, catch me outside. How about mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Um Days after the co-host Ava Chris Tyson has been accused of being a child predator. Yeah, so he, he's the one that made the comment about, I don't think she's 14. Those boobs are way too big. To well, me. how old was she when she was on Dr. Phil? Because that's what made her famous. Yeah, I think that was probably like 16 or 17. Double check that. 13? Oh, shit. Dr. Phil? Oh, shit. Well, that didn't sound too good. Yeah, no. No, you know, but again, like, there's AI. I need more proof. I need more fucking, you know what I'm saying? To just go one way or the other, man. Look, man, when you're in the public, bro, everything you say gets twisted and never in your favor, always against Mm -hmm. it. Um, Which is part of the reason why I just say whatever the fuck I want because, and I stand by it. Like, it is what the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. I think different than you or I said something different than you. If you're going to talk for 10 hours a week on a fucking microphone, you're going to say some shit sometimes. Um, I don't think this is a good look for him. I don't think having that person around is a good look for him. I think we have to admit that there is a real situation with pedophiles becoming trans women in reality. Okay. There is a lot of men who are pedophiles who become trans women and then try to use that to get closer to children in a lot of different ways. And uh, it appears that this is just another case of that. We see this with the drag queens having to go and shake their ass and their ball sacks in front of little kids, uh, a drag queen story. How come we never see women pretending to be men, trans men, doing that same thing? Right. Right. It's always that. men doing it and they're always around children. And the question isn't why are they allowed to do it? It's why do they want to do it? Why do these grown men want to dress up as women and then be around and have an audience with children? Why? The, the answer is very obvious, okay? So we the trans community, which I do believe there's a lot of uh, trans people that just choose to live a different way. And I don't think that's a, I don't, in, in my opinion, if you're going to be trans, I'm an open-minded person, okay? Wh- whether you think that or not. I'm very closed-minded to tyranny. And I'm not some extreme right weirdo. If someone wants to live their life and not bother anyone and be treated normal, I think that's an acceptable expectation in the United States of America. But when you start doing goofy ass shit, like dancing around people's kids or trying to shower in women's locker rooms and see women naked and you've got a fully exposed penis with a hard dick, like we talked about when Riley Gaines was on the show and all this shit, that is predatory, nasty shit that cannot be tolerated. Okay, if you're going to be a trans woman and you're actually a man, you should be using the men's restroom. And if dudes look at you weird, tough shit. You chose to be that. Okay, I don't say that it's right, but you know, I mean, dude, there's consequences for your actions. Listen, you can't bro, just act like you can. Li- make listen, these, dude, and there's no consequences. Listen, bro, <laughs> it, you have to. You we cannot. I mean, it's getting him in trouble right now. Hopefully, he learned his lesson. Yeah, because. You, the, a lot of these people are mentally fucked, bro, and they're mentally fucked around the topic of sex. Yeah. It's a fetish, okay? It's not a, it's not a uh, you know, I was born in the wrong body. It's grown men who have a fetish for cross-dressing, which has existed for fucking thousands of years, okay? Who have now taken it from just cross-dressing to actually, like, having surgeries and transitioning, 
And a lot of these people are mentally ill. Well, and he left two kids and a wife. That's right. And if you if you are someone who- black. Hold on. <laughs> you didn't have any great drink. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, dude. Bro, if you allow these people around you- and import, you're going to have to understand that there's probably a lot of secret shit they're doing that you have no fucking idea about. Yeah. And I will say this, and I'm going to give credit here. The trans community is pissed about this mm -hmm. because they said that this will set the trans community back hundreds, a hundred years. And I agree that it will. Yeah. And this is why I said, do you remember that clip that went mega viral for me, like a hundred million views, like a couple years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. where I said that we never see trans women, we never see men are women trying to be men doing this shit? It's always men trying to be women, right? Yep. When I said that a couple years ago, you know, a lot of people got upset, but now it's becoming more and more and more and more and more prevalent, and it's becoming more and more and more and more obvious. And if you're going to have one of these people in a key role around you, you have to understand there's very likely some goofy shit going on. All right, so. I hope he learned his lesson, dude. And like, cause Mr. B seems like he's doing a good enough dude, bro. Like, no. you know, like he's done all kinds of shit for people. He, you know, a, 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 and other. Yeah. I listen, mean. man. Aside from his personal success, he, he, you know, he's done a lot of really good things. And um, I just hope that he gets, you know, a, a little bit more discerning around uh, about who he allows to be around him. And dude, we get pressured into allowing these people around us, right? Like, if you don't allow them around me, you're a bigot. And then we start to feel like we start to feel like sorry for them. We're like, no, you know, it's cool. Yeah. Like, I got you, dude. Like, even though you're different, because, dude, I I'm of the of the opinion that like, you know, I I try to be extra kind to people that are different. Mm -hmm. You know, when I got stabbed in the face, bro, my fucking face was swelled up the size of grapefruit for over a year, and everybody looked at me like I was some sort of deformed person. That changed me in that way. So now when I see people that have differences, I go out of my way to make them feel more comfortable. And I think a lot of people do that because they have good hearts. But a lot of these people that are in this scenario here, these are mentally ill sexual predators who are pretending to be a victim class, which they are not. And people feel sorry and they say, oh, you should, we'll take care of you because they're good people. And these, these people you're protecting are not good, bro. You're not a good person if you're messaging a 12-year-old fucking child when you're in your fucking 20s, dude. Period. No, there's nothing it's there. not a mistake. You have no business talking to them. Um, and that's that, dude. I just, you know, I think having... I and I don't even go so far to say this. I think having trans women, or men who are dressed up as women, around you is a liability. Mm. I think it's a liability because it's been so, it's been so sexualized at such a scale and so accepted that now we have people saying minor attracted people and shit. That no, that's not going to fly, bro. Nope. That, and, and if you're associating with that and protecting that, you're going to be lumped in with them. All right. So, like, dude, understand what I'm saying. I actually believe that the women who are trying to be men are fucking pretty normal. They're just trying to be men. You don't see them out there doing this weird shit with kids, you know, but I'm saying men that are trying to be women, you need to be really fucking careful about. That's real, man. Yeah, that's real. Guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, with that being said, let's get to our final segment of the show. Uh, as always, we have thumbs up or dumb as fuck. This is where we bring a headline in. We talk about it. It'll get one of those two options. Um, there, there's always some weird shit happening in, in India. India and Florida, like they're tied for just weird stuff happening. Um. Let's let's dive into it. California's got to be up there too. No, California don't even make top five, bro. The shit that it's always been these out of these two places: India, India, and Florida. Okay, and this one's from India. Okay, thumbs up or dumb as fuck. Headline reads: O R. Doctors removed 18 inch vegetable from farmer's rear after he complained of stomach pains. Well, that would probably do it. <laughs> <laughs> um let's dive into it shocked medics have had to perform a surgery on a farmer after discovering an 18 inch long vegetable stuck in his backside 
the 60-year-old patient from the Chhatrapur district of Madhya Pradesh in India called an ambulance to his farm on Sunday after suffering from severe stomach pain. Once in hospital, doctors were astonished when an x-ray revealed the cause of the unnamed man's discomfort. A giant vegetable, a bottle gourd or a locky, as they are known locally, had been rammed in through his had been rammed through his rectum and become stuck in his anal cavity. It was pressing onto his abdomen, causing severe pain. Surgeons at the district hospital, Chattabur DHC, performed a marathon two and a half hour operation to remove the foreign object. <clears throat> the hospital has initiated an inquiry uh, to determine the exact circumstances surrounding the incident. Dr. Nakadishi Shorj Tav, um, who performed surgery on the patient, said, quote, an abdominal discomfort patient came to us after he first went to the Mission Hospital, where the physician declined to treat him. He then visited the district hospital. After a comprehensive examination, it was discovered that the patient had a very high blood sugar level. Uh, in this case, the procedure was completed once the sugar was under control after providing him medication. Additionally, the large intestines burst. It was mended, and for the time being, the anus has formed through the stomach. It was discovered upon examination that he had put a bottle gourd within his rectum. After being admitted, the membrane burst during the procedure. Um, he added that the vegetable was about an, uh, one and a half foot long. Um, they say the elderly man is currently in stable condition and recovering well under the care of the doctors. Well, how did it get there? Well, there's there's only one way. Aaron. So he's sticking a f gourd up his own ass and then calling the ambulance to say, I don't know why my stomach hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Now I have something on this. There's, there, I think there, there's a conspiracy. Look at that guy on the far right. He looks like he's like part of the Gord Porn he Club. He looks like he does not supposed to be there. Yeah, he looks like oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it too, but it didn't get me. Like it got you. Uh, there, there's a conspiracy here, though, man. Because this town. Do you remember like a couple of while back we had that 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 thumbs up where the uh, the one the two farmers were like in a dispute? And yeah, like, sent the, it's the same town. Oh really? Same town. Shit's getting wild over there, Bro. dude. Bro. So like was the old was this the old man that had the young man's you know, got his penis cut off? No. Is the same old man farmer? Nah. And he tricked him by like, you know, giving him too much curry slushy or something and he passed out and then shoved a gourd up his butt and That's why I asked how it got there. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you meant like how like not like physically how. Yeah, who put it there? Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, like what do you go in there and say, hey, <laughs> Shit was getting weird. It got a little too weird. Pertha wanted to have yeah. too much fun last night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, bro. Don't stick shit up your ass. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. Thumbs are okay. I, this is this is this is nasty shit, bro. This is thumbs down. <laughs> yeah. Weirdos. Dude, this guy definitely does not belong in the room. No, bro. He's like... He's just holding a saline bottle thinking he's I, doing something. I think he's waiting for his turn. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Where are you taking it? Don't worry about it. Fuck, man. Look how big that is. Yep. Jesus. Yep. I don't know why my stomach hurts. Bro, they got him strung out there on the cross, too. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like one of those execution tables. <laughs> Bro, if I ever go to the hospital with a foot and a half long gourd in my ass, just kill me, dude. Gotcha. I can't live with it. Mm. Mm, 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 yep. Mm. Yep. All right. That's Thumb, thumbs down. Thumbs down on that one. All right. Cool, man. Well, guys, Andy, that's all I got. All right, guys. Don't forget. Don't be a hoe. Share the show. <laughs>